Bless us now as we preach the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Another way of saying this is that the Lord is not only concerned with our actions as Jewish theology uh, has put major emphasis on the actions of a person as to indicate their righteousness. Um, the man acted right in Jewish theology. The assumption was that he was right. But the Lord is not just concerned about our actions, but he also is concerned with our thoughts as well. Amen. Thoughts, the inner man, the mind, the inner being, moral consciousness. You remember David said, uh, in Psalms 51 and 6, thou desirest truth in my inward parts. He says, in my mind, in my inward secret, the secret parts of me, you wanted truth. That is fidelity. I submit that the last thing the last thing that we surrender to the Lord in many cases is our thought life because our thoughts are private. People can't read your mind. Your spouse don't know what you're thinking. Your friends don't know what you're thinking. Or what you think at times. Your children, your siblings don't know. Amen. Because it's private. I'm glad the world that we live in, you know, God was thinking. And he's a mighty God. He's, he's a genius, all wise, almighty. Aren't you glad that the Lord didn't allow the thoughts of people to be like, Thoughts are in comic books. If you've ever read a comic, uh, the 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 when people when when they when they're dealing with the language, the spoken word, it's in a circle, a little, with a little pointed edge that comes from whoever the, the 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 person is that's doing the talking. There's a round thing pointed at them, and it's perfectly round. And these are their words. But when it's their thoughts, it's like little dots. Dots come from the person. And it's like a cloud. It's not perfectly round. They're thinking. I'm so glad today that I, don't, I can't read all of the dots. And all of the thoughts that are going on even right now. <laughs> I might give it up. I said, Lord, I quit. But the Lord is concerned with us. In fact, our Lord said this to the scribes and the Pharisees of Matthew's gospel, chapter 23. Would you turn to it, please? The Lord says this in Matthew's gospel, chapter 23, in verse 25. He says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. And then he called them hypocrites. Often people read this particular verse and says that the Lord says, uh, Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites. No, there was only two groups he was talking to, and he called both hypocrites. The scribes who were the scholars of the law. Amen. The word Pharisees, excuse me, literally means separated ones. The righteous ones who were more righteous than anyone else. They were the religious authorities. The scribes were the keeper of the law. They, they, a part of their job was to make sure the scribes constantly 
because the paper and the things that people wrote on aren't like what we are accustomed to. They constantly rewrote the law of Moses. It was constant because the, the, the paper, the papyrus would dissolve. So their job was to protect the law. They were the major interpreters of the law. And yet Jesus said to the scribes and to the Pharisees, he called them hypocrites. He says, woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup and of the dish, King James says platter, but within are full of extortion and excess. He says, and he used the metaphor of a, a platter and a cup. He says, the Pharisees had been occupied with external religion instead of uh, that internal, the inner person, because they were uh, making the outside of it clean, but leaving the inside of the cup dirty. Amen. The basic guarantee to cleaning out of the outside is to clean the inside of the cup. Amen. Within, they were filled with greed and self-indulgence, but on the outside, the Pharisees were dressed uh, quite properly. They were the picture of holiness and righteousness. Everything fitted the way that it was supposed to. The dresses, the, the, the gowns, the outfits, they were not too long, they were not too short. They were all proper. They, they wore their liturgical gear religiously and they had all of that going right for them and they paid attention to that stuff they made sure those things were just just right nothing nothing could 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 go wrong it was just right and they gave no attention to the self-indulgence and the greed that was in their hearts. That's like dressing up a person uh, without giving them a bath. Praise the Lord. So clean on the outside, but dirty on the inside. Amen. Jesus says in verse 26, Thou blind Pharisees, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, and the outside of them may be clean, that the outside of them may be clean also. And in verse 27, he switches metaphors. He goes from the metaphor of a cup and a dish to the metaphor of a gravesite. And so he says, Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like uh, the whited sepulchres, which indeed, indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but are, but are within full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Uh, just before Passover each year, it was customary to whitewash the graves with lime to clean up all of the grave sites and the sepulchres. And the purpose for doing this was so that they would be identified as such. Uh, nobody wanted to, just before Passover, accidentally come in contact with a grave site or a corpse. Because if you did, then you would be disqualified from participating in the Passover. So the beautifying, the cleaning of the sepulchres was not a matter of aesthetics. It was so that they would be recognized for what they are so that people would not inadvertently come in contact with them. As a matter of fact, if you inadvertently came in contact with uh, one of the sepulchres, one of the graves, and it disqualified you, and where you could no longer participate in the Passover, then that beautiful thing to you would be an object of disgust. It would be something 
that is to be shunned. So because the, 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 the scribes and the Pharisees uh, put so much concentration on the outside and did not uh, work on the inside, Jesus was saying that they are now actually people who should be avoided. They're people that you need to stay away from, even though they are the religious leaders, even though they're considered to be religious authorities. He said, but because of what's on the inside of them, and they allow their inside to go unchecked, instead of allowing them to feed you the word of the Lord, he says from them, they are to be avoided at all costs, because if you stay in contact with them, they will defile you. And they will disqualify you. I don't want to be an instrument of defilement to another believer. To another believer, I want to... You, you want to live where you are a blessing in, in someone's life. Am I right? Amen. And so he said, due to their preoccupation with it, uh, they, are, they are people who need to be avoided. Look, look at this, and, and, and I'll move on from this. He says, even so, verse 28, even so ye also outwardly appear righteous to men, but within are full of hypocrisy, and iniquity. He severely rebuked them. Our text shows. is showing us. That. Sin. Is both. Doing. And. Being. Sin. Is both. Doing. And being. The wicked man. Must stop doing sin. And the righteous, the unrighteous man must stop being sinful in his thoughts. And just as an aside, have you noticed fewer and fewer preachers now preach against sin? Fewer and fewer preachers now even talk about sin. Most preachers today preach as though America and the world doesn't have a sin problem. But sin is our enemy. Sin is public enemy number one. Sin, not poverty, not lack, not lack of self-awareness, nor your haters. Sin. Is the greatest menace, menace to society. Not global warming. But sin. Praise the Lord. Human beings have a sin problem. Just think of all the broken marriages. Of all the broken marriages. The broken homes. The broken hearts. The derail, derailed careers. The diseases. The wars. The sicknesses. And, all, and such like all of the things that exist because of our sin. Because we lost the war on prohibition and the alcohol industry worn out. Just look at the number of lives that are lost yearly, annually, due to drunk driving. Oh, we have a drug epidemic in our country. In our country. Drugs are pouring into our country and people are dying. And there are those who say that there is no crisis at the border. I find it odd that for 21 years, both on both sides, both parties, for 21 years said that we have a crisis at the border. We have a, poor, a problem at the border. We just didn't have any leaders who were brave enough to address the problems that we have at our southern border. And then when we get one who will address the problem at the southern border, all of a sudden now, there's no problem at the southern border. But for 21 years, it was a problem at the southern border. Was it fentanyl? 
and, and, and various drugs are pouring in and they are, uh, we, have, we have a crisis going on. All of this because of sin. A man the other day, um, forgive me for not knowing his name, this was sent to my attention. Uh, the brother uh, decided that, uh, brother, he decided uh, that he, the gentleman, no longer wanted to live uh, a binary lifestyle. Now, we've been told all the time that people have no choice. But he said, you know what? The LBGT community uh, have thrown me away. They treat me like I don't exist. It says, so I, I went at, from being uh, a biological male to becoming a female. And uh, I had the operation. But he wasn't a fool. Right. He saved certain things. <laughs> and so, you know, he, he, praise the Lord. And he says, so then I decided that I would be a woman. And then I went from there to being binary. I decided to be a it. And the way that they have treated me. And this is, this is the story. Call me. I'll send it to you. The, the, Jamie. Jamie, shoot. Look him up. Jamie said, the way that the community have treated me, I'm going back to being a biological male. And no wonder people are so messed up. People don't even know how to speak to people anymore. Because you want to ask, well, what are you today? Are you a man? Are you a woman? Are you an it? Well, how do, praise the Lord. Uh, one, one of the pastors in our, uh, in our district said one of uh, his members, uh, now, now I hope you ought to make the air a little stronger. Okay. Uh, I see people putting their coats on. Y'all all right? I'm not going to ask because if I send out, one person is putting their coat on and another person is fanning. <laughs> so visitors, I don't know what to do. Well, maybe, maybe if I can preach a little faster, that might uh, uh, get us out. But uh, one, one, uh, uh, a school teacher came to her, her pastor the other day. I won't mention the, the pastor because I don't want to mention the district so that someone could possibly get in trouble. Uh, but uh, she's ready to resign because she has at least four children in her class who are being raised to be its. They're called they. Now you know that that's a sin problem. That, that's a sin problem. And, and uh, there was a time that that, that, that was, a, that, that was a, uh, a, 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 a legal term that described such idiocy. And it was called child abuse. You, you, couldn't, you couldn't do that to a child, to a little boy or a little girl. But now, because we've descended so in sin, in sin, now we have, see, sin makes you crazy. Uh, uh, Elder Earl Carter said, sin, and he was right, makes you foolish. It is utter idiocy. It is ludicrous. Uh, it, is, it is, oh, by the height of stupidity on society's part to think that it is a noble thing to disregard all common sense, to suspend all rational thinking, and to assume that in raising a child, that you got to raise that child to be neither male nor female, and raise the child in the real world with other children who won't have a problem at all telling them what they are. Then the other kids get in trouble. They get expelled because you got the Adams family, some crazy people trying to bend folks' will into accepting crazy, wicked, evil behavior. And yet, mostly every candidate who is running to be uh, the president 
to uh, in, in 2020 who's running endorse this behavior. Check out their websites. Don't believe me. Ask them. I was in D.C. the other day, and uh, maybe others had it, but I didn't see anybody else. I was over there where the senators are, and in front of Kamala Harris's, uh, her front door is a large flag of the, the state of California, because she represents California. And then uh, there's Old Glory, uh, United States of America. And in the midst, and, 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 and the biggest flag of the three was a big rainbow flag for LGBTQ craziness. And this is being endorsed by people who want our support. That's sin. We are, we are turning America into Sodom and Gomorrah. And every time you read about Sodom and Gomorrah, the story ends the same way. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. We have a sin problem. And the Lord says concerning our sin problem, uh, he gave, he's given us a remedy. Let me move on. He says, come. In Isaiah chapter 18, uh, chapter 1 and verse 18. Come, the Lord says, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scholar. Whoo. They shall be white as snow, though they be red like crimson, though they be dyed red. They shall be as wool. I'll make them white as wool. Isn't that something? And then the Lord says, and if you, if ye be willing, reading from the King James, and obedient. If you come willing and obedient, I wonder how many today are willing and obedient. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse, if you're unwilling and rebel and you're defiant, and look at the defiance in society today to biblical standards. Look at the defiance to the word of God. Look at how people with a straight face defiant the God of the Bible. I was reading in a book one time. The book was entitled Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I was enjoying the book. It was a, the man's a financial genius. And he said in the book that they say that the love of money is the root of all evil. And he says, no, it's not the love of money. It's the lack of money. Well, the they who said that the love of money is the root cause of all evil is the Bible. God said the love of money is the root cause of all evil. Bless you, Sister Douglas. God bless you, woman of God. God said that. Well, now if you're going to rebel against God, I don't want to read. You know what? I didn't read the next sentence. I said, well, that's it. Closing this book. Because he's defiant. Now what is he going to say when he stands someday before the God who made everything? I hope before that day comes, he repents of his sin. But if you are, if you are unwilling and defiant, he says you shall be devoured with the sword for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Oh my, look at Isaiah chapter 53. I want to show you something, uh, a little progression here. Uh, as the, we serve a God who said this, he says, uh, Isaiah 53 and 1 who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Well, the arm of the Lord, and I'll show you in just a moment, is Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Isaiah 59 and verse 16, says, And when he saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor, Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness, it sustained him. This, 
this particular passage is about the, the, the first advent of Jesus Christ. And when God saw that there was nobody that could solve the sin problem, he said his arm, the arm of the Lord, brought salvation. Isn't that wonderful? Then Matthew 1 and 21 says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And if you follow me to John's gospel, chapter 12, and verse 37 says, uh, John 12 and 37 says, But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. That the saying of Isaiah, the prophet, might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore, they could not believe, because Isaiah said again, he hath blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, that they should not see, and their eyes, uh, and with their eyes, nor understand with their hearts, and be converted, that I should heal them. One of the greatest judgments, one of the worst forms of judgment that is passed, that is meted out to people who refuse to believe, is when God assigns them to unbelief. Hence the urgency of verse 6 of our text that says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. When you refuse to hear, refuse to know, refuse to adjust, adjust what God gives is a spirit of unbelief. Now you can't believe. Amen. Now you can't believe. And you don't want that. Accept the Lord as he's tugging at your heart. Don't just sit there and endlessly say, I'm not ready. I don't want it. I don't want to give up my fun. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. No. When the Lord is tugging at you, that tug at your heart won't last forever. And if the Holy Spirit stops tugging, you lose the ability to believe. He can work miracles before you and you still won't believe. He can heal your grandmother and you still won't believe. He can make, he can make a way for you out of no way and you still won't believe. Because see now, the greatest sin is the sin of unbelief. And without belief, you can't repent. This is why you don't want to be the person who says, there ain't but one thing I've done wrong. I stayed in sin a little too long because too long can be a disaster. Amen. The Lord is concerned about our conduct. We, the, the, the wicked must forsake his way. Are you with me? But I also want you to understand that the God of the Bible, and you probably won't, you probably give me, will give me fewer amens than you're giving me now, uh, is also concerned with our conduct. How, uh, our conduct, but with our thought life. How we think. What's on your mind. What's on my mind. What we think. Matthew's gospel, chapter 15, verse 10 and down. You don't mind if we let the Bible do the preaching, do you? The Bible says, and he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out the mouth, this defileth the man. Verse 12, then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou? that the Pharisees were offended uh, after they heard this saying. This is verse, verse 12, is after he had spoken. He's no longer in the company of the crowd. He steals away with the disciples. 
they go to him and say, they come to him and say, do you not know that when you said uh, that that which uh, enters a man is not what defiles him, but what uh, 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 comes out, said, do you not know that you offended the Pharisees? And see, you got you to understand the weight of their comment. They, at that time, respected the Pharisees. They were the authorities. They were uh, the muckety muck. They were the ones to whom everybody looked to for religious teachings. Jesus crossed them. I'm going to preach a message one, one day. Have you offended anybody lately? He offended them. In this day where we, 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 we don't want to offend anyone. Whatever you do, preacher, don't offend anybody. Jesus offended them. Because he, he, he went against their teachings. If you read verse 2, they, they asked Jesus, the Pharisees and the scribes, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they uh, wash not their hands when they eat bread. Why don't why why they don't do the ceremonial cleanings like the rest of us? Well, Jesus said, I'm gonna tell you why. I'm tell you why. You know, you know what he said? Because it doesn't matter. That which uh he says, that which uh, goeth into the mouth defileth not a man, but that which cometh out. So they said, hey, do you do you not know that you've offended them? But he answered and said, Are you following me? Verse 13. He answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly father uh, hath not planted shall be uprooted. Now, what's this point? Point number one is, he says, um, they're out. They're dead. Don't look to them for your religious teachings anymore. They're dead. Their, their time's up. My heavenly father hadn't even planted them. So, of course, they're offended. They're offended because they're being uprooted. Now, they wouldn't have been uprooted if they would accept my teachings. But since they are offended by my teachings, then it shows that the Heavenly Father never planted them anyway. So some of you were never planted. You, you, you listen to me, Facebook. Some of you, uh, you get mad when the preacher preach God's truth. And you get offended and, no, oh, you post your rebuttals and all your stuff. Post all you want. But I'm here to say to you that unless you get right with God, your candlestick will be removed and you will be uprooted. You can take the people whom Christ have planted are people who agree with Christ. Amen. Doesn't matter to me how large your church is. Doesn't matter how much money you have. I don't care about how. Listen, it doesn't matter how many followers you have. Doesn't matter what rank you hold. If you disagree with Jesus, if you preach against the Bible, if you go against biblical teachings, then that's proof that you have not been planted by the Heavenly Father. And every plant that my Heavenly Father Half not planted. Jesus said shall be uprooted. And then he said since they're out. They're not planted. He says verse 14. Let them alone. So who cares whether or not they're offended. Let them alone. Leave them alone. Don't attend their service anymore. Let them alone. Why? They are blind leaders. Of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind. Both shall fall into the ditch. So there's no point in following them. Because if they reject me. If they reject my teachings. If they reject the biblical standard. Then they are blind. And then answered Peter. And said unto him. Declare unto us this parable. Lord teach us. So we can understand. And Jesus says. Are ye also yet. <laughs> Without understanding. Do you not yet understand that what entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out uh, into the drought, that is, into the toilet? That's what happens with the human body, with the normal digestive 
process. He says, so, but those things which proceeded out of the mouth come from the heart. The word heart there is also translated mind. They, they and they defile the man. The mind defiles the man. The thoughts are what defile the man. And notice what he said. The first thing he mentions, uh, for out of the heart, out of the mind, proceeded, look at number one, evil thoughts. Look at this. Evil thoughts. Thoughts. And, uh, and then look at what happens as a result of evil thinking. Murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. You know, uh, no, listen, listen. All of these things began with a thought. All adultery, no adultery uh, starts in real life. By the time the act of adultery have been performed, thoughts of adultery have been alive and well for a long time. By the time acts of fornication have been uh, performed, thoughts of fornication have been active in the person for a long time. I must be preaching to a dead church. Praise the Lord. I can't, get, I can't get much help. Maybe I need to go back to Houston. You, you, you preach holiness, mother. They, they won't say much. They want to they they hear me preach about the haters and destiny. And the Lord's getting ready to make you rich. Look, listen. There are rich people with messed up minds. Amen. All down in Florida at the massage parlors. Praise all, all kinds of stuff. Billionaires. And <laughs> billionaires and trillionaires and zillionaires. But their, but their thoughts are not right. Can I get a witness? Verse 20 says, uh, These are the things which defile a man. To eat with unwashed hands. That's external religion. Defile, uh, defile if not a man. See, let me tell you, we can dress the part, but until we let the Lord work on our hearts, amen, we are not right. I said he's calling for all of me. Can I get a witness? Way, ways are our actions, but the thoughts are deal with the mind. Our plans, schemes of the heart. Thank you, Jesus. That which comes from the mind. That which comes from the mind and that which comes to mind need to be checked by the Holy Ghost. Because all kinds of things come from the mind. And all kinds of things come to mind. And we've got to learn to challenge our thoughts. We're preoccupied with lust, preoccupied with ambition, preoccupied, minds dominated with thoughts of jealousy, envy, strife, wickedness, perversion, homosexuality, thefts, liars, adultery. These things are in our minds while we have on our turn back collars, our liturgical garb. Praise the Lord while we're saying preach. Preach man of God. Sometimes the mind is saying something totally different. But I want to warn all of us. God reads the mind. And he weighs the thoughts. Mm, can I get a witness? Oh, you know the Bible. The Bible is right. This is why we're taught that we've got to guard our minds. We've got to protect our minds. Proverbs chapter 4 tells you plainly, keep thine heart with all diligence. For out of the heart flows the issues of life. Everything 
comes from your mind. Amen. The expositor says the heart there is the mind. The issues of life. Issues, excuse me, literally means a border, an extremity, an end point. It may refer to the end point uh, to, uh, or to the extreme reach. The heart or the mind is the starting point of all activities of life. Everything starts in the mind. The mind determines how far left we go. The extreme, the extremities, or where it starts at. Sometimes it starts with a glance. Sometimes it starts with lunch. Sometimes it starts with a conversation. Sometimes sin starts with a fragrance. The mind. The issues of life. The mind. That's why you got to guard your mind. That's why believers got to be careful as to our choices of entertainment. Our choice, choices of television shows. Some of you, you're not, you, you, you'd, be, you'd be closer to God if your cable package was smaller. But you have them all. HBO, Showtime, Cinemax, Star. All of them, all of them, all of them. And there you go all late at night. When, and when you can't find what you want on them, you get on demand. Pull, pull that up. And when that don't work, you get the fire stick. Pull that up. And there you go feeding. Feeding the mind. Praise the Lord. It determines the course of life. Whatever the heart, whatever the mind loves, let me preach to you. Whatever the mind loves, the eyes will see and hear. People who love to eat will spot a restaurant no matter where they are. Amen. There's one, there's one. <laughs> they don't need the GPS. They know where the restaurants are. They love to eat. So their eyes will see it and their ears will hear it. People who love coffee know where all the coffee shops are in town. Praise the Lord. You know them all. You know them all. I'm not going to call any of the names of the show because I'm not, I'm not selling your coffee. But we, you know all of them. What occupies the attention of your heart. Praise the Lord. Out of it spans the issues of life. Uh, can I get a witness? If we pollute that wellspring. You pollute, you let the devil pollute your thoughts, the infection will spread. Before too long, hidden appetites will become open sins and public shame. This is why you got to let the Lord deliver you. You can't keep that hidden appetite because it won't stay there. It won't just stay in your mind sooner or later. Sooner or later, that thing will uh, manifest itself. Now it's gone from an appetite to a behavior, to a tendency. And you know, pride uh, goes before destruction. And I mean, the devil make you think that you, you got it, you got it. This is something you can do. And you know what happens? You, then you become a slave to it. It becomes your slave master. Now the thought has become a, a behavior, a sin that controls you. And once that phase is finished, the next thing it goes from controlling you to exposing you and destroying you. This is why sin has to be dealt with on the, you know, the thought level. Somebody ought to lift their mouth, hands and say, Lord, work on my mind. Oh, uh, you're getting it now. Y'all made me work, but let me tell you something. We've got to make sure that we let the Lord clean up our minds. This is why David said in Psalms 51 and 10, create in me a clean heart. Praise the Lord. Don't just change my clothes, Lord. I got to get my heart right. When Jesus got through with the maniac of Gadara, he was found clothed, sitting, 
but in his right mind. See, that's the thing. That's the thing. See, you want to be in your right mind. Praise the Lord. The Psalms 12 and 2 warns us to avoid, to avoid a double heart or a double mind. James tells us that the double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Proverbs 28 and 14 warns against a hard heart. Don't you harden your mind. Don't you sit there while I'm preaching and argue back with me in your mind. I don't care what you say. I'm going to do like I do. I don't care what you say. I'm, I'm who I am. I'm growing. I know. I know. No, no, no. You got a hard heart. You got a hard mind. You don't let the word of God touch you. And let me tell you something. A hard mind will make for a soft bottom. Because when, when, when. See, none of us are bigger than life. None of us, none of us are beyond the laws of nature and the laws of God. And you, the devil will make you go to the well one time too many. And you'll pay for the rest of your days. This is why you need to guard against a hard heart. The Bible says in Proverbs 21 and 4, he warns against the proud heart. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Doesn't matter who we are. Nobody's above the word of God. Nobody's above the Bible. Don't even bother me with your degrees. I don't want to have a conversation about your accomplishments. Keep your money. Your money perish with you. Let me tell you something. All of us will have to stand before the almighty God. The Bible warns against an unbelieving heart. In Hebrews 3 and 12 and then in Matthew 24... And 12, the Bible speaks against a cold heart. And I heard David in Psalms 139 and 23, he says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. I wonder if anybody here who wants the Lord today to search them. Thank you, Jesus. I, I know, Lord, that I came dressed the part. Yes, sir, I know I got that part right. I came, uh, I looked like a preacher. I, 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 you, if you know, I was at the airport and somebody walked up to me and said, hello, Bishop. And I spoke to the brother and, and I, I said, uh, he said, uh, what reformation are you in? Because uh, he, he knew that this was not just jury. Uh, he knew that it signified something. But you can, you can wear the chain that signifies something. But that doesn't mean your heart is right. Oh, Lord, we looked apart this morning, but that ain't enough. God says, I want your mind. Some of us look straight, but we're sissies in the mind. Some of us act reasonable, but we're wicked in the mind. Ooh, Lord, somebody act holy, but you are whole in your mind. Ah! Ah, Lord, work on my mind. Do I have anybody here who will ask God to touch their thoughts? Thank you, Jesus. Deliver me from a carnal mind. The carnal mind is that carnal carnality. Carnality is not necessarily adultery. Carnality is not necessarily fornication. It's not necessarily acts of evil. The carnal minded person is that believer who is always fleshly minded. When the Holy Ghost moves, they don't know what to do. Have you ever been around somebody and even in the midst of a Holy Ghost service, they're still telling jokes, they're still trying to be funny, they're still laughing at people, they find comedy in the way you shout? That's a carnal person. And one of the worst things on earth to be is carnal. For the Bible said to be carnally minded is death. That's an equation. That's not a formula. It's not saying if you're carnal minded, it'll lead to death. No, sir. It's an equation. To be carnal minded is death. 
Why are you walking in carnality? You're walking in death. But I heard him say, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Do you want joy? Do you want to have a good life? Oh Lord, then learn to give your mind over to the Lord. Notice what the text says. The text says, let the, the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous his thoughts. Where the word forsake, the word forsake applies both to the wicked and the unrighteous. The word forsake applies both to the way and thoughts. Good God Almighty, some things you got to tell yourself, I'm not going to think that way anymore. Yes, I'm guilty of thinking that way on yesterday, but I gave it up. I forsook it. I put it under the blood. And if somebody run into you and they try to pull you back into that way of thinking, you tell them, I won't go back. I won't go back. My God has been good to me. Jesus has set me free. Oh, I won't go back. Yeah, my mind in times past. Somebody said, yes, I used to think like that. Yes, I used to let my mind run away with me. But I told the Lord, take over my mind. I told the Lord, give me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. And I've changed. Yeah! Oh, yeah! Somebody praise him for your mind. Praise him for your new thoughts. Say yeah. Say yeah. Lift your hands and say, I'm not the way I used to be. The Lord has changed my mind. Yeah. Yeah, Lord. Uh, oh, Lord. Thank you. Let me close here. Let me, let me close here. But notice that the Lord when he began in our text to deal with himself and how he operates. The prophet Isaiah, Brother Sawyer, you're a close Bible student. The prophet Isaiah flipped it. He flipped it when it was God talking. When it was God talking to man, he told man, clean up your way and get your thoughts right. Dealing with man. But when God began to deal with himself, he reversed it. It wasn't ways first, but it was thoughts first. So he reversed it and said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways. Why did he reverse it? He's showing us that's what we got to do. Some of us, we spent the money and we bought the clothes. We bought the uniform. We got the habit. We got the class A and the class B. But we didn't change our minds. God said, before you get the ring, before you change your clothes, let me change your mind. Let me clean up your thinking. For if I clean up your thoughts, then you are clean. You may have on the same old clothes, but you're not the person that you used to be because Jesus changed your mind. He said, my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. I can think thoughts 
that you cannot think and I can do things that you can't do but if you let me clean you up I will have mercy on you and I will pardon you and I will turn your life around say what a deal what an offer what a proper somebody anybody everybody offer the Lord your ways and your thoughts for he's calling for all of me he's calling for both I want you to walk right but I want you to think right I want you to shout right but I want your mind right yeah yeah Lord yeah Lord yeah Lord Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Woo! church mother say got a mind to live right oh lord got a mind to live right every day since Jesus saved me sanctified me holy I got a mind to live right hey. Hey, every day we, we need to bring back some of those songs because they make the point they make the point they make the point some of us want promotion but we don't want the mind some of us want to be seen but we don't want God to work on our minds some of us want to be recognized but we don't want to give him the mind the Lord's been dealing with me. He's been dealing with me. I said, your thoughts. So your thoughts got to be right. Your deliberations got to be right. Your schemes got to be right. Your purposes have got to be right. Yes, you can look holy. Y'all don't hear me. You can look the part. The saints can believe you. But I, the Lord, I know the heart. I try the reins. I know, I know, I know who you are. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh Lord. Look at the person next to you and tell them, I want to give you an A+. Plus. You got the outside right. You looked apart. But only God knows your thoughts. Only God knows what's on your mind. Only God knows. Oh, cut up, oh, see. Told you, we're seeking him. He's calling us to higher heights and deeper depths. Hallelujah. Everybody said, said, preacher, I want the Lord. I was found in the word today. There's ever been a Sunday when, when you ought not to care about what people think. <laughs> it's this one. I don't care what they thought. 
I'm coming to the altar because I want my thought life to be right with God. I want my thought life. I, I've got, I got a lot of things right, but Lord, there are some lingering thoughts. Some of them are thoughts of resentment. Some of them of a, of a lustful nature. Somebody struggling with identity crisis, sexual identity crisis. Amen. You, you might have all kinds of muscles and, and yet the vo voices are speaking to your head. That's the devil. Some of you struggle with thoughts of inadequacy. Amen. Some of you, the devil has magnified himself so in your eyes that he's intimidated you. And he's got you so, got you too afraid to even try to do any better. Others, the devil has lowered himself in your eyes so much that he, he's got you thinking you got it going on and he's getting ready to trick you. Both are bad. Amen. Satan wants us to dismiss him. I, oh, I've got this. I'm, oh, praise the Lord. I, I got this. I'm in charge. Uh, oh, he's got your way he wants you now. Now your whole career getting ready to come tumbling down. Oh, the mountain is so big that you're scared to even start. Either way, it's not true. He's a liar. The God of the Bible is concerned about our thought life. It is not the will of the Lord for you to hate or resent people who is not your color. It's not the will of the Lord for you to hate or resent people who are not even of your religion. You can't win a person hating them. That man who shot those Muslims over in New Zealand. That wasn't the work of Christ. That's not the work of the church. Amen. What Christians do, we try to win souls. Through persuasion. Through prayer. And through living the life. Nowhere in the Bible, in New Testament Christianity, where we're told to go in and shoot up a synagogue. Amen. That, that's not Christian. That's not, that's not, that's not what, we, what we believe. I pray that through the massacre, that Jesus somehow get to the hearts of these people. And this is why these, 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 these killers are so bad, because many times they try to do this stuff. I don't think this guy did, but he tried to do it in the name of the law. And, and, uh, and now when the media gets through with it, the media, which I hate at times because they have an agenda. They don't just report the news. They will make it where you can't even say Islam is wrong without calling that hate speech now. That's, that's the goal. That's the goal. See, Use this tragedy to silence debate. And a differing opinion. No, until the Muslim gets saved, they're going to hell. That's 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 true. That's, it's still true. It was true before the massacre. It's true now. Everybody's going to be lost who don't accept Jesus. That's biblical teaching. Pastor, I don't agree with that. You're dismissed as a teacher. Pharisee. Scribe. Hypocrite. Glory. I want to pray. My mind, Lord. My thoughts. My thoughts. I bring, we bring to you today, Lord, our innermost being. Oh, God. Our privacy on a level that is unmatched, we bring it to you. We bring, when your word spoke of hidden parts and inward parts, literally in the Hebrew law, it talks about secrets. There are secrets that people hold that they hadn't shared with anybody. God, today we bring those secrets to you. We bring those things that are not like you. Things that we would not be able to articulate. That we wouldn't dare say. 
we bring them to you. Oh God. And then we bring Shikarabosa. We bring those counterfeit thoughts. I'm praying and teaching. Counterfeit thoughts. Because Satan studies you and learns your thought patterns. And he knows how to interject certain thoughts and deliberations and make you think that it's your mind when it's not you, it's him. He whispers to a boy and tells a boy at a vulnerable time, he whispers softly at first and says, you're a girl. Before long, that voice is going to screaming in him. We come against those spirits. We come against those whispering demons of pedophilia. The devil trying to make you look at a, a child. The, de the devil is a liar in the name of Jesus. We come against those thoughts of that pornography. We rebuke it right now. Give up that porn. Give up that porn. Give it up. 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 It's destroying your mind. It's putting images in there that only the blood of Jesus can get out. Oh, give it up. Give it up. I know it's easy to access now. It's on the cell phones. It's on the iPads. It's everywhere. But give it up. It's going to destroy your marriage. Don't let the devil fool you. Oh, give it up. In the name of Jesus. Thoughts of jealousy, envy, and strife. Give it up. Forgive your mother and forgive your father. Forgive that person that hurt you. Let that resentment go. It'll mess up your mind. In the name of Jesus. Be careful what you listen to. Hallelujah. Good God Almighty. You don't have a husband. You don't have a wife. But you got all of Beyonce's records. And you're listening to all that junk. You're starting fires in your own spirit that you can't biblically put out. Why would you do it? Give it up in the name of Jesus. Give it up today. Let God clean your mind. Hallelujah. I want you to work on, Lord, what comes from my mind and what comes to mind in the name of Jesus. I want my mind pure. I want my heart cleansed. I wish I had a praying church. Oh, too many for me to lay hands on you. So we got to pray. Is every man for himself. We got to pray. Every woman for himself. Call on the name of Jesus. Tell the Lord, Lord, sanctify my mind. Lord, clean my heart. In the name of Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Oh, oh Lord, take away. Take away. Take away thoughts of lying take away lust take away fornication take away adultery take away the appetite for sin take away that lust for wrong that lust for the club that craving for drugs, that lust for marijuana. Lord, Lord, take it away, take it away. In the name of Jesus, give me tools to fight with. I had the Holy Ghost say, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds 
and the casting down of imaginations and exalting, bringing down every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Lord, clean my mind. Lord, clean my heart. Lord, Lord, do it in Jesus' name. 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 In Jesus' name. My mind, my mind, my mind, my heart, my soul. In the name of Jesus. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. Look at Mother Marshall. So good to see you. So glad you're back. Somebody praise the Lord for her. Hallelujah. We're just excited how God brought you up and he's bringing you out. Give me some oil. God ain't through with you yet. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout glory. Glory. I want some folk who let the Lord work on their minds to praise him just like He's worked on your mind in the name of Jesus. The Lord finished the work. 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 Finish, finish, finish. Finish, finish, finish. Hey, hey, hey. Ha. Yes, Lord. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, the Lord see you through, brother. The Lord heal your heart. We love you, man. We thank God for you. Thank God for your sister. You're hard workers in the church. You serve with distinction. And the Lord give you strength. The Lord give you power. Yes, Lord. Come on, saints. Praise him. Come on, saints. Magnify him. Give him your all. Give him your all. You can have my actions and you can have my mind. If you get my mind, you'll have my actions. Oh, oh Lord, if he gets my actions before he get my mind, then I'm just going through the motions. It ain't real. But when he gets my mind, ah, when he gets my mind, it's real. It's real then, yeah. Woo! Why don't you hold three people and say, that's when it becomes real. When he gets my man. When it becomes a real Ooh, Lord Somebody say yeah 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 Yeah, yeah Lord Ain't God a good God Oh Lord Oh Word of instruction, word of instruction, word of instruction. There's a part that you must play with what the Lord has set in motion today. Well, the one thing God won't do, he never does for us, or he seldom does for us, but he tells us to do. I, I, I preached it to you. His word said, the you is understood. The you is understood. Guard your heart with all diligence. You guard your heart with all diligence. Now, you got to do your part. You can't have a move of God like this. Then, then go back to the same old ways now. Turn on the same old shows. Practice the same old behavior. Get on the same old phone. 
and talk the same old jive. No, you can't do it. That means you enjoyed me and you got, you got, you got a good feeling, but you didn't buy it. You got to God. Your heart. And, and through the process, you know what happens through the process of God in your heart? That it's, it's, uh, it's a filtering, Kenya. It's a filtering process. Because as you're forsaking things and you're letting them go, what happens is as you unload, that creates a, a gap for a minute. See, because some of the things that we've been thinking and entertaining, we've thought them and entertained them so long that it's become a way of life. It becomes you. It becomes who you are. So now you're under the you're under the arduous process of becoming somebody different. But not just different, better. You can preach, pray, sing, minister, clean on the inside with a clean heart and a clean mind. You, you can go to the mall and not just stand in there and lust all day after everybody that comes by because we forgot that the Bible warns against an evil eye. That's right. That's right. We, forgot, we forgot that. Well, I just look. I won't do. That's true. But that won't last long. Since everything's designed, it is everything these little sins like that, they're gateway sins. That, that one tendency is actually designed to wreck your career. It just may, it may take 15 years for it to do it. Ooh, all these years later, boom, you fall. Somebody said, well, what happened? Okay, it came on all of a sudden. No, 15 years ago. The Lord said, watch that evil eye, watch that lust, watch that, watch that envy, watch that strife. But no, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't let, you didn't heed. And years later, you fall on your face and it looked like you fell overnight when actually it was a process that took years because you wouldn't let it go. Today, Lord, we let go. Hallelujah. And help us, Lord, to stay committed to having forsaken the thoughts that you have told us to forsake. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise him in the building.